Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode, we're going to be carrying on with a job lot of lawnmowers that I first uh, got in the other week. And next on the bench is one of my little favourites. I love these little lawnmowers and lots of people hate them. These are the Mountfield 414 with the RS100 engine and they are notorious for hunting, notorious for hunting. However, I have found that there is an outlet on Amazon that sells the carburetors for these for around about £14, which I think is worth every single penny. So if you have a machine that is hunting and you, you drill the jets out and what have you, and you might have driven too far and they're running on choke, running too rich, go on to Amazon, punch in RS100 Mountfield engine or Mountfield lawnmower, and then put the word carburetor beside it and you should find the carburetor to fit this machine. They're very, very cheap. They are Chinese copies, but they do the job. So this is next on the bench. Um, I can't remember, without looking back on the video, what this one done. I don't think it even started from my, from my recollection, but uh, we'll have a little look at it anyway. Um, and then we'll see if we can't get this machine to, uh, to run it like the other two have done in the previous videos as well. So hopefully they will run. This machine is a power drive um, mower as well. So if, if it does run and runs okay, uh, then we could be quids in. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this Mountfield 414. Right, Mountfield 414 on the uh, on the old bench. Um, from what I remember, and I just looked at the last video of this, this machine started and then died straight away. That's all it did. So it didn't do anything else but that. Uh, no fuel in the old tank. I don't recall putting any fuel in there. So these are a little bit renowned for fuel leaks as well. So you need to watch those. Uh, best thing to do with these is not sell them straight away put fuel in and then wait until uh, the next morning to see if you've still got fuel in them. Otherwise they do tend to leak a little bit. So let's put a bit of fuel in. Um, right, first thing to do actually is that's missing a block on the dead man or whatever. I think I might have robbed it off of a part during the week. So I have got a spare block here. So let me just find a 10 mil bolt which would be swimming around. I've got a spare block here to put on for the cables, if that's the right size. Yeah, it is. Let me just find a block to put that on and I'll be back in two ticks. I, I robbed it off the machine during the week. Okay, just on the cable, whilst we fill it up with fuel, as you can see, big petrol leak, okay? And that's why I say, um, don't sell them till the next day because you've got a petrol leak on it. So, stem the flow of petrol, shut that off, and straight away what I wanna do is get some WD-40 to neutralize that, that um, petrol, because if the petrol sits on these plastic decks, then it turns them white. I'm out of WD-40, nearly. So this machine straight away needs to have a carburetor investigation, um, which is part of the reason why it started and then ran and then cut out on me during the last job lot video. Let me bring around the other side. Right, back in the room, quick battery change on the old uh, GoPro. Hopefully he caught the last clip, because if he didn't, all I said was, um, when I filled it up with uh, petrol, and um, I was mucking about with the cables, um, it was leaking fuel out of the uh, carburetor here, so I had to spray a WD-40 just to tidy the area up, otherwise the petrol eats into the deck and it makes it turn white. Uh, this deck is actually in good condition, so I don't want it to be a, to be failed by, uh, by the petrol, if I can help it. So take that off where we can. Um, I've also put up another light behind you as well, a little fan light, like I've got for my carburetor cleaning station. Uh, put a little fan light up there, um, just to give you guys a bit more light as well. Hopefully that'll improve, improve the content for you guys. So air filter come out absolutely ringing wet with petrol. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna release that petrol hose pipe, and I wanna see where that fuel is actually coming from. And I can see, I think, straight off the bat, it's coming straight out the front of this carby. So that tells me we have a float issue. Okay. And we've also got a, also got a set of forceps issue as well, a new set of forceps. 
need a new set of forceps, so let's grab a uh, set of fuel hose clamps instead. Let's squeeze that off, hopefully that'll stem that flow. I don't think it is though. We should see in a minute. I think it's made, no, it's still coming through. Okay, that's still coming through. So I have to get a set of clamps. Now my other set of clamps are on the on me um, Atco bound moral. So let's just get a small pair of mole grips. These are the smallest set of hose clamps I got, and actually these are too big. So let's put a set of uh, mollies on there. Just to stem that flow, that's better. That'll do it. That'll do it, John. Right, so um, let's get on with it. Let's get down and dirty. One nut to come off there. One nut to come off there. Everyone are quite tight, actually. I don't know done them up. He man, maybe. Air box to come off. Tip it round the far end and then remove the primer bulb assembly uh, hose off of a carby. That just comes off just like so from there. Okay. Take that off, have a clean. Just spilling, spilling petrol everywhere. I want to get a rag in. I'm going to do a down and dirty just here. Just to save time. Let's get a clean bit of rag in. Put it just there. Um, I want to remove, yeah, someone's been in here because the, uh, the fuel clamp for the carburetor is not where it should be. It's somewhere else. So if someone has been in, Overjoys. Yes, Mr. Fiddle Fairy has been in here. Let's remove a clamp and we're going to move the throttle assembly and the throttle governor spring. Carby then slides off. Got a gasket there. I'd like to save a gasket if I can, please, Mick, without tearing. Are you going to tear on me? Or are you going to come off? You're going to try and tear on me, aren't you? I want to try and keep it if I can. It might have to stay. Right, so let's remove um, carburetor bowl nut ever so gently. Put that just there. I'm going to remove you guys to so get a bit of a better view. Uh, do you know what? Let's do it on the bench. It's as simple as that. Right, up on your Versa tray. Let's have a little look. Let's give it a clean first so we know what we're dealing with. Let's undo that. See what we get, seeing dots of stuff, oh lord, see that? I'm not shocking, I've seen worse, seeing that? I've seen worse, a little bit of Covid on the top, that's alright, we can deal with that, we can vaccinate it. O-ring's in good shape. Let me get some WD-40. I've got a new one there. Uh, now someone's actually removed the, um, the idling screw. That's been taken out. So the fiddle fairies have definitely been in. I can hear my squirrel on top of the shed. Now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to remove this slow idle jet here, which is not really playing ball it seems to be stuck in there quite well it always concerns me when you can't remove certain parts because people have been in oh, that's right in there that was okay that's good right so that's all now been removed we've got a uh, slow uh, main jet in here to come out Oh, that don't feel right either. Oh, that's no, it's coming. That felt like it was uh, it was catching. We'll take that out. There it goes. And we've got an emulsion tube right in the centre here. If you push the emulsion tube right inside here, you see that right in the centre? Little brass bit hanging out the bottom. Push that down. And you should then be able to push it back up 
it down, push it back up, and start to work it loose. And then it should then come out, and it goes, okay. All right, quick little blow off this carburetor, get rid of all this excess dirt, and I'll come back to you. Okay, carburetor's now been blown off. Uh, it's a bit cleaner on the top than what it was beforehand. Let's uh, get rid of some of this muck. So we've got emulsion tube to get out of the way, main jet, that, that, and that, and the bolt. And we'll have a quick little clean, just so we can see what, what else we're capturing as we, uh, as we go along. Um, so first one I want to do, I want to, we had a problem with the carburetor leaking fuel, which tells me we actually had a float issue or needle and seat issue. That's working right. Now I'm going to go through his main, his main orifices of his carburetor. Go for that one there first. That's coming out of the slow idle circuit. And this one here should go through the tube, which it does. Happy with that. Slow idle circuit reverse. That's good. Primer assembly. That coming out. Can't see. Yeah, lovely. And reverse. White in the eyeball, white in the eyeball. Two shots of WD-40 in the eyeball, lovely. Down through the tube. That's good. Right, we're all there. If I need to find an idle screw off of another carby, just so um, We can make it idle because I say someone's removed it from here. See, so someone's been in. That wasn't me. So that tells me if they've removed the idle screw, they've removed that slow running jet there. They've done something to that. That's what it tells me. But that's running. Yeah, that's running out of there. So it is working. That's okay. What about the main jet? Mine just got a lovely big hole in it. I will rim it though, because they are renowned. These little less, these little RS100. That's too big. That's that one there. That one just. Not you. I want your brother. That one. That's one. Just apply some sidewall pressure. See for that now. That's good. And we've got the main tube as well. They all seem to be running. But again, whilst we're in, we'll rim them out. Just so we know for, for our own peace of mind. I think this one's blocked. I think yeah, that one's blocked, I think. They're all good, I can see through them already. Happy with that. Now, needle and seat. Oh, the needle. We actually had, a, we actually had a, a problem with this because it was actually uh, leaking fuel out, which tells me the float wasn't working. That's what it tells me. Or just had a poor seat on it. So what we're going to do is, I have got some. Uh, you guys in America call them Q-tips. Over here we call them uh, call them cotton buds. Got a cotton bud here for cleaning up your ear holes. 
Just going to run that straight into the uh, orifice where the uh, where the, the float needle sits. And you can put them on a drill if you so wish to do so. All I want to do is just clean that, that seat up. It's a brass seat with a rubber needle on it, so no, no need to grind it. That's nice and clean there. So we're happy with that. There's a little bit of gunk just in the corner of this carb. I see you, Mr. Gunk. We'll get me a compressor. My compressor may blow off two seconds. Just going to blow the carby off. Good. Carb is now nice and clean. We're happy with that. The bowl, which could be said the same. It's a bit of rust in that bowl. So we get my uh, wire wool out. A little bit of wire wool. Don't want too much. And a bit of WD-40. Cover your finger at the bottom of a carby bowl. And just literally run that round to take off any rust elements inside that bowl area. Once it starts to get rusty now, that's where you're going to get your bulk of your problems from. So just let's clean the walls of that bowl up. Happy with that. Clean that off. Give that a wipe. And that's the bowl now fully cleaned. Okay, so now we can start to rearrange this uh, carburetor back into its uh, into its working function. Put the float in and the pin to go with it. Let's give that the old test. No air. Lift the float. That's now work as it should do. Get your tube. Longest end goes in first. Followed by your main jet. Plop him in and do him up. That catch is just there. I don't like that. It's gone in. Here comes my Mrs. P. I can see her wandering down. Mrs. P is not very happy because she's been busy in the garden doing gardening and putting flowers in and uh, our squirrels, we've now got three squirrels instead of two. We've got, we got Brian, who's a troublemaker. We've got Bruce, he's as good as gold, my mate Bruce. And Bertie, he's as good as gold. But Brian is not doing nice things, is he, babe? He's digging the flowers back up, isn't he? Yeah, not very happy. So that's good. <clears throat> You're going to the shops, are you? All oh, right, speed up, not a problem, that's fine. Uh, uh, how long are you going to be before back? I'll oh, be back in time, because I've got to go and pick Brandon up, so yeah, no problem, that's fine. Okay, Miss P off to the shops, and I'll spend, while she's out to the shops, Brian will be digging her flowers up. Um, slow idle jet circuit's got to go back in. I need to find a screw for that, don't I? Because um, it weren't very happy. In that goes, so that's now gone in nicely, that's seated in. Um, I can now get my bowl. Now remember what I always say, whenever you fit these, you want to look at it so if your fuel comes in uh, that way, in comes the fuel, so this nut here on the front needs to face the front of the mower. Okay, so it's opposite to the feed on, mo on most machines. Uh, let's have a quick look at the old bottom bowl nut. There's a bit of crud on there, we'll take that off. And we'll do that up. A little 10 mil. That's on, right. Carby, working, good as gold. Let's put it back on the machine, and I need to find a little screw for that first. I'll look for my carburetor um, assortment, see if I can find a little screw for that, just so I can set the idle, otherwise it's not gonna idle right, is it? So, um, yeah, find that, back over the machine, see you in two ticks. Right, we're back, you can see how that deck's gone a little bit white, where that fuel's been dripping down, see that? So you need to make, keep an eye on that, because uh, they do turn the old decks white. Now I have found, uh, off another carby, 
uh, another screw, um, which is for your idle. Got to have it in there, otherwise your machine won't idle right. Or, or what won't throttle up. So let's wind that in. Uh, two and a half threads hanging out the other end, that'll be fine. Um, so it's fresh fuel in now. Um, so now we can put this carby back on. It goes on this way with your primer assembly at the front and your bleed bolt at the front. We can now hook my fuel up and we can now hook up the fuel clamp, which was missing beforehand because someone had been in. I can now release my fuel because I want to check that we're not actually leaking fuel out of here, which now we're not by the looks of it. I can now hook up my governor arm back onto the machine. Or a little bit of a therapeutic therapy. Come on, baby. Cool. It's always the last one, isn't it? Get in. That might be because of that screw. If I unwind that screw, then my governor arm goes all the way back into the rest position. That might help. Didn't help in the slightest. Oh my word. What's occurring there then? That should just go straight in there. There it goes, oh my word. Well right, that's in. We can now get our Governor spring, hook him on to the front of the carby. And now adjust my carby. About two and a half threads out, give or take. That's now all working as it should do. Still no fuel coming out of here, which tells me we've got a, we've got a good system now. We've got any fuel in there actually. Might not have no fuel down there because there's no fuel in my tank. There's fuel in my tank. So no fuel coming out of carby now, that's good. We now get our air fill, give that a bit of a squeeze off Mick, it's got petrol in it. That's it. Uh, air box. Crankcase breather to go on and primer bulb to go on as well. So primer bulb first, you can't see it because it's behind the box. I just fit it on that pipe to there. That goes on and there's a little tiny silly hose clamp to put on there and all. Just push that down. So it all goes on together. Something like that. Tip it round, marry it up with the bolts, and then just poke your head round the back and make sure it goes onto a crankcase breather pipe at the back as well, okay? Once that's done, you can then do up your two 10 mils. There's one. Where'd that go? I dropped it, but I didn't hear a drop, there it is. Right, that's all on. We're happy with that. Air filter can go back in. Super jobbly. Just sit in there, that's better. All right, that's it. Air filter box goes back on. Click, click, that sounds like a priming to me. So, um, I can't do a lot more. Uh, what I should do to this machine, first of all, I should check the oil, number one, check that. Um, if the oil is good, um, I will then proceed to step two, take it outside and we'll give it a fire up. Based upon what we get, results we get out of the fire up, if it runs good, and all that sort of stuff, then uh, I should bring it back in at my leisure to give it a service, blade sharp and balance and all that sort of stuff. But um, the bulk of the repair, I think, will be the carburetor. It may still hunt yet, and they, and they do. Don't be put off by these just because they, they hunt. I've had them that hunt like an absolute pig. 
Um, and and uh, some I can't get running. I just put a new carburetor straight on them to spend the money, new carby, and uh, away we go again. So a quick little clean off, and um, next time we see it, we'll be out on the garden on the lawn, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go for a fire up, and uh, we'll go from there. So see you in two ticks. Right, Mountfield four one four. I think it's going to be done. We shall see. Um, carburetor clean and a bit of a bit of a, a tidy up it may still hunt yet because they do it is primal i can hear it let's see what happens people me i'll put it up on its test um fill it up with juice and just just let it run so it gets on but as far as i'm concerned a1 there you go little mount field 414 now all up and running all we did was a little carburetor clean that's all we really did to it um but that's standard on those um and i like them a lot i've said so in many other videos i like them and so many people have lots of problems with them um, i'm not some kind of lawnmower whisperer um you just got to pay attention to those um that slow idle circuit on those, and also the main jet has got, to, has got to be rimmed out. If you don't rim them out, they hunt like absolute pigs. Um, but just to prove you, you can get it. I have had a couple in my time I, I couldn't do. I must admit, hands up, you know, I just bought a new carb for them for 16, 20 quid. Done, move them on out, out the way. Um, but that little lawnmower, I thought it is, little 16 inch cut, um, power drive, that'll do with someone, they're nice and light. The older people and people with um, shoulder injuries, they love them because they don't take a lot of pulling either. They're quite easy to pull. Um, but it runs sweet as nuts, just finished its test, super, super happy with that, good to go. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told one, I've done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon, but until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.